practice? So that's leading, Steve? What would you call that? Following? When he chased us out of the Persian Gulf? And chased our Air Force out of the sky? What would you call that? Not leading? Well, okay, I rest my case. Now, listen to how Obama then tries to spin it. Hold on. As I said to you, he's a master rhetorician only in the minds of his own sorority because nobody else can believe he would get away with this. You talk about the fable, the king has no clothing. Listen to how Obama tries to spin his weakness in, in the face of Putin's actions. Listen. Uh, Ukraine was governed by a corrupt ruler who was a stooge of Mr. Putin. Syria was Russia's only ally in the region. And today, rather than being able to count on their support and maintain the base they had in Syria, which they've had for a long time, Mr. Putin now is devoting his own troops, his own military, just to barely hold together by a thread his sole ally. He's and challenging in Ukraine, your leadership, Mr. President. Yeah, He's no, challenging your leadership. That, that, Steve, I, I, I got to tell you, if, if you think that running your economy into the ground and having to send troops in in order to prop up your only ally is leadership, then we've got a different definition of leadership. The, um, the statement speaks for itself. All I can say to you is at least one newsman in America is worthy of the word newsman and journalist. And uh, that's uh, Steve Croft of CBS. He dared challenge Barack Obama. The intolerance of Obama, the blindness of Obama is so apparent in that. And it would be embarrassing at the very least, but it's not embarrassing. It's frightening to think he's this blind to his own weakness. And I, I don't know that he's actually that blind to his weakness. I think he must know it, but maybe he doesn't. Maybe he's so caught up in his own rhetoric that he doesn't even know what's going on. Maybe his handlers have convinced him that Putin is weak and that he is strong uh, by taking our planes out of the battle area and by removing our Navy. Maybe that's his uh, idea of strength, is removing a Navy and an Air Force from a, from a, a, war, a war zone. Sure, that's real strength. Now they can go home and concentrate on the real mission of the military under Obama, which is diversity training, and take pictures of the new Navy. You know, that's the main thing. Just I think he just ought to scuttle the fleet somewhere in Baltimore and then take pictures of them cooking food on the ship and then put people who can't drive a sailboat uh, 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 as cap, make them admirals. Here's Admiral Alice Hastings. Will now be interviewed, a five-star admiral. That's the world. It's a primitive world, by the way, but you, can, you can't fool the world when there's no leadership. You can't, no matter how your rhetoric, uh, smart your rhetoric is, no matter how skilled you are in the Aristotelian school of double talk, the people will eventually look through it. And, on, and sadly, I mean, as an American, this is uh, uh, something that's very hard for me to tell you. It's an embarrassment to have a president who was so blind to his own failures and weakness, and it's not going to make... A better show for me to continue to hop on it but I will tell you that his own words he caught himself in his own words by the way when he said so let me say this you mean moving troops in and running your economy into the ground in order to prop up your only ally is leadership I would say that could apply to him it seems to me that he's uh, run his economy into the ground and it seems to me he sent troops in in order to prop up our only ally in various parts of the world so you know who is he talking about that's number one. You know, that's not so unusual. And then he says that Ukraine was run by a corrupt ruler who was a stooge of Putin. Some would think uh, someone in the White House is a stooge of someone. You know, the word stooge is a very powerful word. That's all. End of story. Let's move on. It's Friday. Things are good. Business is good. People are great, wonderful. And the weather is terrific. And my dog doesn't have pinworms. The phone number is 855-400-7282. I'm so mad at Teddy today. He's not here. He's with, thank God he's with Irene the Groomer. It's Friday. You know, people know the dog. They don't know me. If I go out, they don't know me from a hole in the wall because I'm a radio guy. They don't know who I look like. I'm not one of the pancake makeup men. But they see a poodle and they hear me say, Teddy. And they say, oh, wait a minute. If he's Teddy, you must be. Yeah, okay. That's how they know me is through the dog. So he and I are very close. It's sort of like the odd couple. After 11 years with a dog, it really is crazy. 
he leads me into the bedroom at night in the morning, the stretch, jumping off the bed. You fu I go to the bathroom. He comes in the bathroom. I go in the shower. He wants to. He sits out on guard. 11 pounds of pure little bravery. I love this kid, this dog. He's like a person to me. I, I can't help it. It's my nth dog already. This is the smartest one I ever had. But I am so mad at him today because he snuck into the back bedroom and peed on the floor again. Every time I leave him here and take a bike ride, he gets even with me by sneaking in the back bedroom and peeing on the floor. And I've told him over and over again, Teddy, you're 11 years old. That's 77 in dog in human years. Can you stop it already? Can't you stop it? So he looks at me and says, well, look, at 77. What do you expect? Maybe I need the pens. You could have yelled at me when I was a teenager, but I'm not a teenager anymore. You know, I'm getting older. Okay, I did it when I was a kid. I couldn't control it. But for many years, I didn't do it. But now I'm 11. What do you want from me? A 77-year-old dog, so he can't control his bladder the way he once did. At least that's what he looks at me with the eyes. I didn't feed him this morning. She picked him up early. I gave her the chicken to feed him. I hope Irene fed him, if she's listening. But he goes to, uh, we call it Camp Irene. Mondays and Fridays, he gets the, everybody knows this dog. Whichever store I go into, they all know that. Oh, where's your dog today? He's at the groomer when I'm not with him. I said he has better hair care than I do, but that's because he has better hair than I do. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. We have breaking news to confirm on the Savage Nation. This is a huge story. A caller said that the United States pulled its only aircraft carrier out of the Persian Gulf at 11 p.m. We can now confirm via NBC News that that's 100% true. As Russian warships rained down cruise missiles as part of its military strike in Syria, there is now a glaring absence in the region. For the first time since 07, the United States Navy has no aircraft carrier in the Persian Gulf. I repeat, military stooges said that they've pulled the USS Theodore Roosevelt, which is home to about 5,000 cooks and uh, tailors and 65 combat planes, so that it can undergo maintenance? The ship officially exited the Gulf around 11 p.m. Eastern Time. The temporary measure is also set to be the result of mandatory budget cuts. Ladies and gentlemen, the lack of a U.S. presence in the Gulf comes as Russia is escalating its actions in the region and pounding targets in Syria. My friends, this is a shocker. I want you to listen to what your president said to Steve Croft about leadership and how powerful he, Obama, really is and how weak Putin really is. Listen carefully, again, in light of what you just learned. So that's leading, Steve? The, uh, so l let me ask you this question. When I came into office, uh, Ukraine was governed by a corrupt ruler who was a stooge of Mr. Putin. Syria was Russia's only ally in the region. And today, and rather than being able to count on their support and maintain the base they had in Syria, which they've had for a long rolling time, the R's, Mr. Putin Barry. now is devoting his own troops, his own military, mm -hmm. just to barely hold together by a thread his together. sole ally. And He's challenging in Ukraine, your leadership, Mr. President. Yeah, He's no, challenging your leadership. That, 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 Steve, I, I, I got to tell you, if, if you think that running your economy into the ground and having to send troops in in order to prop up your only ally is leadership, then we've got a different definition of leadership. Well, apparently Barack Obama's definition of leadership is turning tail and running from a war. Apparently Barack Obama's uh, idea of leadership is hiding under the covers. This is sickening because the Navy often had two carriers operating in the Persian Gulf. The combat planes that he just pulled out of the Gulf can fly into war zones and act as a show of force to Iran and other nations, uh, which it has done. And the USS Theodore Roosevelt is a massive nuclear-powered aircraft carrier, which, ha which has had a central role in the fight against ISIS in Iraq and Syria since August of 2014. And now Obama has pulled them from the Persian Gulf. Gulf. There's no question. There's no question Obama did this because he's terrified that either the Russians or the Chinese will sink a carrier. 
That's how frightened he is of the realities on the ground. And no matter what he says to Steve Croft, no matter how well he rolls the R's, some, a trick he learned at Harvard, well, Miss Steve, I've this, uh, roll the R's and everyone will just kiss your toes, huh? Let me tell you something. There was a fable written a long time ago entitled, The King Has No Clothes. And even if the king rolls his R's and shines his shoes, sometimes people can see a naked king. This is a shocker. It's a shocker. It's unbelievable to me. The man is so blind to his own failures that I worry for the nation. Did you hear the news story? Now, of course, the, the progressives, will, progressives who are really regressives will celebrate this. How can they celebrate turning tail and running from a war zone? If at the same time he's sounding the alarm against Russia and saying Russia is doing the wrong thing, then why is he removing the only aircraft carrier from the Persian Gulf? And why is he taking our aircraft out of the area? Because the Russians warned them to do so. I can guarantee you that the Russians probably said, I'll tell you what, you want to leave your planes there? We'll get into a dogfight with you. You want to leave your carrier there? We have nuclear subs. We'll sink your aircraft carrier. That's what just happened. Is that not a probability or a possibility? I think so. Here we go again. The walk of shame under Barack Obama. But don't worry, he'll be in Oregon telling you to give up your guns in order to stop the gun violence in America. Don't you worry about it. He's in charge.